Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to welcome David Huberman. Um, David studied telecoms and geography and after university almost pursued a career in the TV industry. Uh, accidentally, though, um, he ended up working for Aaron and after further positions at Microsoft and Oracle, eventually joined ICANN's office of the CTO as a technical engagement manager. Today, David will talk about his findings from a programmatic survey of the state of reverse DNS of all IPv4 allocations from RIPE NCC to German networks. So please put your questions to the question tab. And uh, David, thanks for joining us. The stage is yours. Oh, hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for that introduction, Alte. Um, hi, I'm David Huberman. Very happy to be here. I wish we were together in Hamburg, but uh, perhaps next time. Um, I wanted to take a look and see how we're doing these days uh, in reverse DNS. Um, so I created a tool uh, that puts together uh, three different measurements. Um, the first is we took a look, I take a look at all the IPv4 allocations to a country. So for Germany, all the IPv4 allocations from all five RIRs. Um, I don't assume the home RIR has all of the allocations. Um, then I take those and I figure out which blocks uh, are seen in the DFC. Um, for this, I, uh, our friends at Lynx uh, have a, uh, they dump their BGP table every couple of hours into a flat file, uh, which is very useful for doing measurements. Um, and then I take the blocks and I start scanning for PTR records, put all that together, and uh, we get a little bit of a picture of what it looks like. Um, I'm only doing this for IPv4 uh, because it's that last bit, uh, scanning the PTR records, uh, that I haven't figured out how to do yet in IPv6. Uh, the space is too big. Um, statistical sampling uh, doesn't seem to work very well, uh, and, and scanning all the records takes too much time. Uh, so for now, uh, for the first stage, I'm just doing IPv4. So for Germany. Uh, there are 9,644 IPv4 allocations from all five RIRs. Uh, I measured that at midnight last night. Um, allocations in the uh, regional internet registry databases uh, do not have to be on bit. They can just have a starting IP address and an ending IP address. And indeed, for Germany, they're actually uh, quite a bit more CIDR blocks than allocations. Um, but for statistical purposes, we're comparing uh, against the 9,644. Um, the first 20 of them, I discarded them uh, because there are 20 allocations that are smaller than a 24. Um, the good news is in Germany, uh, reverse DNS and IPv4 is in very good shape. Uh, these are much bigger numbers uh, than in any other country of size that I've taken a look at. Um, approximately 89% uh, of all allocations uh, either have a PTR or don't need it because they're not routed. Um, as you see, 71% of the allocations are routed in the DFC that I'm looking at, uh, and we can find PTR records. Um, skipping down towards the bottom, uh, not in the DFC, so not routed that I can see, uh, but does have a PTR. Uh, those are typically because reverse DNS is kind of a set it and forget it activity for many people. Uh, uh, there's an old joke that uh, a reverse DNS, a PTR record is obsolete uh, the moment you put it in because uh, you're going to forget all about it. Um, uh, these are often, from what I've seen, abandoned blocks. Uh, the LIR doesn't exist anymore uh, for practical purposes or the block has been forgotten about, um, uh, but the PTRs are still there. Um, and also, of course, at the bottom, not in the DFC and does not have a PTR. These are almost exclusively blocks that are no longer in use, uh, often for organizations that no longer exist. Uh, but right there in the middle, uh, in the DFC, uh, but no PTR records found anywhere, um, is 11%. Um, when we talk about reverse DNS, uh, traditionally, uh, we're often talking in the context of email, uh, because uh, looking at MX records, both forward and backwards, uh, is a very good uh, anti-spam technique. But email is a technology from yesterday, um, and it's, not, it's getting less and less relevant in the modern world uh, as a communication medium. We have other faster and less cumbersome uh, communication mediums that we rely on more. <clears throat> so why am I talking about this? 
Uh, it's simply network engineers to network engineers. Um, we still have a technology from yesterday we use a lot, and that's trace route. Um, when we do a trace route for a packet that is transiting through somebody's network or destined for somebody's network, uh, okay, <coughs> we get a list of IP addresses in each hop and some response times, and that's cool. Um, but it's a lot more useful if we have uh, good PTR records that give us a little bit hint about what the device is, a border router, a transit router, a core router, whatever we want to call it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and it's also useful if we have a place name, an airport code, a city name, uh, something that identifies where this piece of equipment is. So this talk is just if uh, you would consider, <coughs> if you would please consider looking at your network elements and tagging them with a PTR. And that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um... There are actually uh, a couple of questions coming in. Um, uh, first question, shouldn't in DFZ and have a PTR plus in DFZ and no PTR add up to 100%? Uh, no, because uh, if you're not in the DFZ, you can still have a PTR. I can still scan the name server that's authoritative and take a look and see. Um, <coughs> so it's the three, it's, it's the three together. Well, it's all four actually. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And uh, can you share how many percent of the prefixes are not coming from RIPE NCC that you located in Germany? Oh, uh, I will get back to you on that in the chat. I got to I got to troll through the logs. OK, thank you. That's it. So thank you very much for that uh, for that quick talk, David. It was a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks.